Oh my god, it's here. It's here. They actually did it, the mad lads. We were joking about it actually being a summer Freya. And here she is. Holy hell. Okay, okay, okay. So she is a green unit, all right? She's a green unit and the cards look sick. Oh my god, look at the animation. So she has like one attack where she sends the a cat there and then she has an attack. I don't know what that is. It looks like a fountain or something. Looks amazing. And oh my god, the artwork. Oh, let's go. Let's freaking go. So we're just gonna, I mean, we're not even gonna look at LR Eskinor. Screw that, we're just gonna look at this. So yeah, let's go. That's her ult animation. I'm not gonna have the sound play or anything. But my god, look at that. Oh my god, that looks so good. That looks so good. It's the same ult animation, of course. Oh my god, he has a, <laughs> the cat has a life preserver. <laughs> and sunglasses. Oh, that's the best outfit ever. My god, look at that. Yeah, we're simping today, boys. We're simping today. But yeah, she has a hell of a long thingy to actually translate here. And I'll have to go into Google Translate. We are going to translate it live. I will sort of use translation as well as contextualization to sort of see what she actually does here. So let's see. This is, I'm assuming her passive, it only works in PvP, it seems. So it increases your basic stats by 8% for each specific ally participating in pvp battle and gives a charm to the enemy with the highest combat class at the start of the battle for the specific allies part that is of course ragnarok characters as well as unknown so we so we got another unit for the freyer and tier team let's go <laughs> <laughs> now what the charm thing does of course it says unable to overlap with mark i'm not sure exactly what that is but i'm guessing potentially it's gonna be the same thing glane does but anyway it continues enemies with charm only attack freya and have their damage dealt to her reduced by 40 percent that is massive honestly that's actually huge so that's basically like a dian taunt and it says also the damage dealt by your reduction skill is increased by 30 percent i'm assuming it's just that your, your damage dealt with all your skills are increased by 30 percent because it appears she doesn't have any sort of debuff skill so i'm not sure exactly what the translation means by reduction skill and it continues and when you use your skill to deal critical damage to the enemy the debuffs on you are removed one by one and all your stats are restored i don't know exactly what it means all your stats are restored but it continues increases by five percent up to maximum 15 percent ah okay so anytime you crit an enemy you will like remove all your debuffs or is it one debuff then increases your all stats by five percent and this stacks up to three times so up to 15 percent off that increase that is actually nuts that is honestly kind of good with freyer as well as tier honestly like yeah that could be a very very good team so first attack there is a single target pierce card and the second attack i don't know exactly what that is like it says inflicts attack damage to a single enemy and does like reduction and reduction is reduces the enemy's crit resistance by 50 percent and disables critical damage doubled and nullifies critical yeah i meant these translations disables critical damage or nullifies critical damage for two turns i'm assuming it just reduces crit resistance right i think that is just what it is i'm not sure exactly what this part right here is like it could be and prevents the enemy from being able to crit or something or i don't know but that is actually huge so she's basically gonna debuff the enemies or that is what this seems like it seems like a debuff or maybe it just ignores 50 percent crit resistance maybe that is what it is i kind of wanna you know th this is just my first impressions of it of course and the ultimate of course is the same wave type abyss type ultimate same exact percentage numbers so yeah there is that. Of course, the banner here. Uh, let's have a look at it. Oh, so you got Summer Lizhawk, I think. Yeah, I actually got Summer Lizhawk. That's unfortunate. Uh, we do have Red Liz here. That is very nice. So she is the Super Awakening Coin Dungeon. I know some of the comments on my latest Super Awakening Coin Dungeon video. People were like complaining like, yeah, oh, they don't have her. You can actually get Eskenor at UR level 90. That is nuts. <laughs> that is of course because he got an LR and we'll go over that in a moment but honestly this banner is kind of okay-ish like you got red lids here that is very very nice honestly most people probably skipped her and also, if you don't have Kizuna, this Red Liz could potentially be a very good substitute for that. So this banner isn't all that bad. You got Summer Merlin, of course, for the attack seal. You got Diane here for the OG Demon. And the rest are sort of forgettable. Maybe like uh, Blue Lilia there could be useful. So not the greatest banner, but the unit itself, my, my god, man. Just for the cosmetic. <laughs> Just for a cosmetic for like your red Freya. That is worth it. Alright, so they're gonna add a artifact card set. And yeah, I actually did notice this. Look look at Ban there. Does he get a new cosmetic here? I can't remember actually seeing this cosmetic on Ban. And is it going to be the transcendent ban or the light ban or any of the older bans? Because that's the same cosmetic as like this card is. So let's have a look at what the effect here is. So it works for humans and unknowns. So increase the attack by 3% for each ally of that specific race on the battlefield, and the specific race are human and unknown. That is very nice. I'm 
not sure if it is just attack or attack related stats. It says attack power, so I'm assuming it's just attack. That is usually how that is uh, translated on the well, Google Translate whenever you translate the Japanese text. That is kind of nice, like it's going to increase your attack by up to 12%. Like that's not a lot. So there are, of course, a lot better card sets, but I mean, it's not it's not super bad anyway. Like if it is attack related stats, that's like 12%, right? So it's not super, super bad and you don't need to farm out the dog materials. And then you can also mix and match humans and unknowns with this card. So unlike the dog card set where you actually need units of a specific race in order to get like the attack related stats, right? So here we have Lar Escanor and these translations are gonna be mad. Like there's no way any of this is gonna actually be properly translated here. Honestly, you just have to wait for like proper translations, but I'll give it my best. I'm just gonna do a quick translation of the passive up here first. So now the translation keeps changing on me, but let's just look at what it actually does. So removes buffs and debuffs and becomes immune to debuff when the hero's ultimate move gauge is completely filled. Now it says that gives one eternal flame for three turns at the end of the turn to enemies who did not use skills during the enemy turn. That appears to be like eternal flame. Is it same as ignite effect? Like is that it? Uh, is it same like as Melasculus passive, red Melasculus or commandment I guess for like enemies who don't use skills. And if all allies including subslots are humans at the start of their turn, all adds one eternal flame to the enemies for three turns. Oh wow. So every single turn, no matter what, it will always add one eternal flame. That includes like if you have a full team of human allies, that includes the backline slot unit. So he's a human buffer now. Holy hell, let's go. So you will always add one eternal flame. And then if the enemies don't actually use a skill with one of their units, they will be applied with one additional eternal flame. Also for each eternal flame on the enemy, your attack related stats are increased by 5% up to a maximum of 30%. And when your special move gauge reaches max, the buff and debuff effects on yourself are removed and remove and disable. That is what it says. Okay, eternal flame damage received plus 15%. So it stacks up to four times and increases the damage taken by up to 60%. That is crazy. And it's also going to increase its own attack related stats. Yo, that is actually nuts. That is so good. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go. Right, so let's look at the first skill here. Like, so it basically does nothing on bronze and then on silver and gold, it like fills your gauge move by one or two orbs. And now it's had its damage increased by an additional 50% here, of course. So instead of 500%, it's 550% and generates two special move gauge orbs and also does explosion damage for each eternal flame on the target. So 40% additional damage for each eternal flame on the enemy. Holy hell. So an enemy has four eternal flames. Then you're going to deal an additional 160% damage with this attack. Plus fill your old gauge orbs. That is what it does. It's a new sort of ability. It's translated as explosion. I'm sure it's going to be something else. But yeah. Very, very nice. Now, the Cruel Sun ability, of course, applies an Ignite effect to the enemies. That is sort of why I thought the Eternal Flame was the Ignite effect, but perhaps it's not because it's completely different. But of course, if you can stack Ignite with the Eternal Flames, the Ignite effect is also going to increase the damage the targets take by 10% per Ignite effect. So that is very nice. This one also removes buffs on Silver. So let's just see what the new translations for the ability do. It appears to not have changed. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. Like, removes buffs from a scene enemy and deals damage equal to 180% of attack and grants two ignite effects for three turns that is on level gold no it actually is level one okay so on level one where it actually just applied ignite it is gonna remove buffs. So it's a buff remover on level one and it applies two ignites for three turns not just one ignite so one additional ignite and a buff remover on level one and then we have the level three translations down here did it have its damage numbers changed no it didn't so 180 and 300 are exactly the same but on level three here of course it is applies two ignite effects for four turns removes buffs and deals that amount of damage and the translation says that it removes the buff effects of a single enemy deals damage equal to 300 of attack and gives four ignite effects for four turns so you're basically gonna stack a bunch of ignites on the enemies that's gonna be crazy like i wonder how that will work out with kyo um, on like a few full human team will that even be good i don't know and the ultimate of course uh, it does nothing like it just deals a bunch of damage up to like 12 60 or 14 40 if you have a merlin link which honestly you should have because the merlin link gives eskin or crit chance but it basically gonna reduce the enemy's crit resistance by 100%. So nullifies 100% crit resistance of a single enemy and then ults them. So he will basically always crit the enemies unless of course the enemies have like super stacked out crit resistance, which they will need to have quite a lot of crit resistance stacked in order for like it not to matter. Uh, they don't actually show his stats here. I'm guessing we're gonna find out exactly what his substats and stuff like that are. But honestly, he does seem very, very nice for a regular old SSR unit. Like you have to remember, this isn't a 
festival unit getting an LR. This is a regular SSR unit getting an LR. And an old SSR unit at that. So I am honestly very surprised that, that he is as good as he is here on paper. We'll just have to see exactly how good he's going to be. But it does appear to be a full human buffer. Like it doesn't buff the humans. But it most definitely benefits quite a lot for having like a full human team. So I wonder if you're going to run him with the Transcendent Bond. Uh, with sort of the Taunting Arthur. And maybe some other like human backline unit. We're just going to have to see. Uh, but getting him up to LR isn't the worst thing either. Because we are of course potentially going to get Chaos Arthur by the end of the year. So yeah, I'm honestly very excited for the things to come. But Escanor looks amazing. All right. So here they seem to have added the tournament winners as like a commemorative statue uh, from the fourth anniversary special tournament in the capital city of Leona. So yeah, that's, that's honestly quite nice. You, know, you can actually see the winners, the gold, bronze and silver medalists. And I do wonder, is this going to be here forever or just, you know, for a short while? The fourth anniversary special tournament commemorative bronze statue will be maintained until next event. Okay, so it's just going to be very, very temporary. You can go there, you can see who the winners were. And I guess it's like really, really cool for the winners themselves to actually see their their efforts being immortalized in the game well immortalized i say but you know for the time being then we got some diamond shop bonus things probably nothing you care about as a real play like there's nothing new or exciting here that i'm seeing uh, with this particular shop but so we're gonna get a login bonus and the first three days we are gonna get our free multi that is very very nice even if you're not like intending on summoning maybe you can like get something nice from the free multi and we're actually getting six ssr pendants and 10 super awakening coins from the login bonus which is very nice indeed and we're also getting a summer world quest so i'm pretty sure this is gonna be the same one as the previous years or like you know the last year or whatever so I can't quite remember exactly what that was, but it, it was something at least. Uh, summer special box reward. So we are going to get a special box from this event by completing it. And I do believe it's going to contain all of these items. So maybe not. Maybe it's a chance, but I'm not sure. You can get the world quest will open play rank 8. I'm guessing you're getting like a bunch of these. Maybe like 5 or 6 or 10. I'm not sure exactly how many. And then there's a, like a percentage chance of getting any one of these items. I'm not sure what the percentages are going to be. But it, this one is probably going to be very, very low. This one is going to be like the most common one. Like 50. 15% chance or something like these three. But yeah, I mean, it's some free stuff. Maybe you can get some diamonds. That's going to be nice. Yes, and we're also getting the Four Sorgers or the SP Dungeon event. I can, of course, get some diamonds. I'm not sure exactly what else you get from the completion reward here. I guess we'll just have to find out and see. So, all right, the Hawk Dream event is back. So I believe this is one of the better Hawk events. It is sort of the AFK event. So you kind of do need to log in, I believe, like once every eight hours if you want to min-max it. But it's not really that important to actually, you know, do. But, you know, you will be able to quite easily complete it during the event if you play every day just casually so you're gonna be able to get all the rewards let's see what the rewards are so the level up rewards are these so we're gonna get two of the cards five gems three super awakening coins three of these five star awakened gear pieces one ssr pendant and some ur potions and a little bit of gold nothing super fancy but there is an exchange shop so you can get up to three ssr pendants additionally a bunch of demon mats 200 anvils that is very nice and 80 of these regular potions so they are giving away quite a lot of potions because they know that of course you do need a lot of them for the LR Escanor so yeah they're preparing you for that the giant boss battle hawk also returns and with him of course you're gonna be able to get some more SSR pendants of course that's very nice and five additional gems so and there's an exchange shop so you can get one UR pendant you can get an additional three SSR pendants the remaining three cards you can also get from here and demon materials so five of each of these demon materials that is kind of nice hero arena season two opens so there's gonna be a new hero arena here that's very nice probably some new enemies enemies to face so it is all gonna be the same uh except for this here because it says hero arena season 2 improvements and changes if the game does not end normally during battle you can resume the battle all right they already talked about this so basically if you quit out of the client and you go back in you will be prompted like oh do you want to continue where you left off and you can hit yes it's the same with the demonic beast so if you sort of mess up one turn before it's actually the enemy's turn you can quit out of the client and sort of have a restart of your turn so there's no time limit during battle hero arena enough for a total of six weeks will be held every week so a total of six weeks that means that we can get up to well i'm not sure exactly how many but if you do it on the this difficulty here we can actually use links which i'm assuming most people will be able to do around here or perhaps even this but if you do it here you can get 10 lr materials every week and for six weeks that is going to be 60 lr materials very very nice season characters that can apply season buffs have been added and can be confirmed through the season character display oh so this is basically 
like what they're doing with One Piece treasure cruise. So when you have the treasure map thingy, you get a banner that you can summon on and you can get characters specific for that treasure map that give like extra buffs for that specific treasure map. So for example, here they have the new Freya, so you kind of need to summon for her if you want to get the seasonal buff. And the seasonal buff can of course help you beat like the harder difficulty. So potentially you're gonna need her. I'm not sure exactly like if you, if you really, really need her, but it is there. She looks super good, but... <laughs> Should you summon for her? Probably not. Unless, of course, you're going for the full new sort of Ragnarok PvP team and you do have like Freyr's Holy Relic and of course like summon for her. But other than that, we are going to get the global 3.5 anniversary coming up at the end of the month. That is going to be a new festival. So if you can save your gems, I would honestly suggest you save your gems rather than getting this seasonal buff and just do the lower difficulties for now. I think that would be better, but we just have to see exactly what the seasonal buff does. I'm not sure. I can't, I can't seem to find anything about it here. Maybe it's like buffing your stats or whatever but we'll see so the shop doesn't seem to be that much different you will of course want to buy all of these and not buy any of these unless of course you are at 100 but even then you will of course you know make your LR Escanor and then continue buying these if you have a bunch of additional ones before you even think about buying any of these other materials but yeah so Roxy and Ban are getting new summer outfits oh my god the sword on the Roxy one looks amazing so yeah I will have to simp for that as well and get the Ban cosmetic as well that's kind of nice and we get some returning ones as well here you can get them if you want to and some old ones here as well a vacation costume reprint appearance uh, does Escanor get one so this one Escanor does get one uh, the old one does not appear to have gotten one so get them if you want to uh, this Meliodas one already returned which it already did when the LR Meliodas uh, came out you can get whatever costumes you want these ones you will be able to purchase with like diamonds uh, these ones you will only be able to purchase with money so there is that also we're getting some uh, older like Escanor cosmetics back which is kind of nice like these cosmetics look very nice uh, particularly like this one this one's also very very dapper so yeah and these are 30 diamonds each so if you do have some extra diamonds lying around and you kind of want the cosmetics for the Escanor or of course go for it. Uh, the village donation event is back also so we are gonna be able to donate to the village and get up to six SSR pendants by donating up to like six million gold. And then there's a battle event whatever and here's some improvements and bug fixes so the improvements some debuff effects improvements will be made so that the effect will not be displayed when the enemy with a debuff is targeted or uses a skill. It will be displayed normally when participating in battle or when checking information with evil eye of Baylor. So when you actually inspect the enemy uh, effects will not be displayed when an enemy with a debuff is targeted or uses a skill. I'm not sure exactly how, how this improves anything or what it actually improves. Maybe the mistranslation here because I am using, of course, you know, Google Translate. Improved skip ticket usage. When using a skip ticket, the product speed will be improved more quickly. The maximum number of skip tickets can be used from 10 to 30. Oh, so you will be able to speed up the, you know, whenever you use a skip ticket, it goes like click, 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 click. It goes through, you know, the rewards that you get through the stages. It will do that a lot faster and you can get up to 30. So I'm assuming that's going to be like a speed increase by a factor of three. And there's some bug fixes. So fix an issue where the unable to use attack skill characteristic was not applied when fighting in Memory of Heaven or Tower of the World Tree under certain circumstances. So I'm assuming attack seal. All right. And fix an issue where the beauty costume sunglasses for running seven the less interesting ban was displayed differently than the icon when worn uh did ban have any sunglasses on on uh, one of his costumes was that the oh it's probably the i'm a global player so i don't have this yet but it's probably the hawk pass outfit right the cyclist ban or whatever it was or the runner ban something like that but i think with that that is gonna wrap up the news here the big two things of course or the big three things two things on freya and of course the lr eskinor <laughs> <laughs> yeah very very excited for this update but anyway i think that's gonna be it for me do let me know what you guys think about the new escanor as well as the new freya what do you think about the update as a whole the hero arena and all that stuff sound off down in the comments below but with that i think that's it thanks for watching hope you have a most wonderful rest of your day and yeah i guess i catch you in the next one bye